Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. We bless God for being here in this place. And as the organist is playing, tis so sweet to trust him. We're here today because we trust him, because we know that his resume stands true to who God is. So we bless God on this day. Thank We thank those of you who are worshiping with us via Facebook Live, as well as those on our streaming service on YouTube. Thank you for joining us here. And we thank all of those who are in the sanctuary this morning. And I forgot to put this on one of our slides, but I do want to remind us that we are nearing voting season. So uh, I'm sure all of you are already prepared, you're registered, but for those, if you know people who are not registered, get them registered to vote. And early voting begins, I believe, October 17th. So I plan on being at Wolf Creek, amen, that's my voting precinct, to make sure I get my vote in. Uh, and we're blessed to have a voting precinct here at Cliftondale. Uh, so know where you are to vote, and let's get those votes in. It is, it is vital to our lives. Amen. Amen. I want to thank our United Methodist men, and I'm only going to call one name else I get in trouble, but Brother Billy Dukes pulled together a phenomenal fish fry on yesterday. Amen. <laughs> if you were able to stop by, and we had hundreds of people all over the place. So we had such an incredible time. And even though God blessed us financially, I was telling uh, folks, I said the, the greatest blessing came from not only the fellowship, but the community engagement. All the people that we met from the community who came out. Uh, and, and that's what we are all about. So we bless God for what you all led us in yesterday, uh, United Methodist Men. Uh, tomorrow, uh, one of the reasons, well, the reason why uh, uh, I pulled Minister Ray to preach today is because I was tapped. Uh, I'm leading worship at an event tomorrow morning at Marietta First, and uh, it was one of those voluntold things, else I wouldn't have taken it. But I'm leading the worship at, uh, at what's called a Bishop's Day of Heart, and it's a gathering for North Georgia Conference for all of the ministers of the many churches and our bishop. And uh, as I was pulled into it, I voluntold our choir. Amen. So they will be with me tomorrow morning. Uh, alongside a few other uh, singers. Some of my siblings will be with us as well, but it is an honor. So I'm asking for your prayers. Uh, it is at 1030 tomorrow morning. So please be in prayer with us that God's glory goes forth. Uh, we first, you know, bless God for this and want to honor God, but also this is a great time to live, live to the love. Amen. 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 That's exciting. Amen. Amen. Also, on October 23rd, we are planning another outdoor event. Uh, and that event, I should call it an event, it's a worship service. We'll be having a worship service on the 23rd of October, which is our 58th church anniversary. So you'll continue hearing uh, different things that our worship team is planning for that wonderful event. It will be uh, an outdoor worship service as well as a picnic brunch. So great plans are, are coming forth. So please spread the word. Uh, again, you can remain in your cars and listen. You can sit out on chairs. You can bring your own chairs. Uh, you can sit out on blankets if you like. Uh, we just want to have a good time in God. So please spread the word. Church anniversary, October 23rd at 10 a.m. on the outside. Also, I want to go ministry at that we're uh, getting off again, reigniting. We've been, been invited to uh, Young Adults Heart on Fire Retreat, which will be held at East Point, Malibu. So we're asking parents with youth, uh, this will be a great event. Uh, the church will be purchasing the books. The book was written by one of our own pastors, Reverend Robert King, who is pastor of Golden United Methodist in Douglasville. Uh, but the event will be at uh, Malibu, East Point, Malibu, in East Point. And it will be hosted by Poplar Spring Young Adult Ministry along with East Point Malibu. So young people, uh, just 
parents, give the office a call and we'll get you signed up so that we can enjoy that event. The 31st of October, Trump or Treat. So please, please, please tell your friends, tell your neighbors to come on out so we can get rid of this candy. Amen. My favorite are Reese's Cups. So I'm going to buy those and if I can't give them all out, I will be eating them. Amen. So help me out here. So fill up your trunks and come on out and let's have a great time on the lawn. We, this is why we, we expanded this parking lot so we can do wonderful events like this for the community. So we bless God for that. Also for children 5 to 11, our children's church is on, in the lower level of the sanctuary. Uh, as you see young people coming in, the ushers will help guide you. And um, it, again, it is downstairs with Mrs. Star Ricks. Ways to give the club. We love electronic giving. We love paper giving. We love it all. Amen. So um, you can give it anytime. We have cards and cues that you can scan. Take, it takes you to the website. Also, after the sermon, we will be receiving the offering the old-fashioned way. So we make it a convenient for everyone. And lastly, hard copies of these and other announcements are available in the Narthex. So again, we bless God for your being here. And at this time, we want you to turn to page 77 in your hymnals, uh, and maybe on the screen as well. 77 is an old hymn of the church, How Great Thou Art. So we are going to stand and sing that together to acknowledge the greatness of our God. Amen. Oh Lord my God, when I
Fantasia suggests that sometimes you have to lose everything just to win again. Now that's a heavy reality for us, but it reigns true because the Fantasia Barino that we are speaking or that I am speaking about today, she lost everything so that she could win again. To you under the sound of my voice, I hate to inform you of this harsh reality that in this lifetime, you will experience loss. But you have to go through the loss to make room for what, is, for what you will win in the end. We know of um, uh, Fantasia Marina, we know of her as the American Idol sensation today. But in her movie, Life is Not a Fairy Tale, the Fantasia Marino story, a 16-year-old Fantasia found herself in an abusive relationship that left her pregnant and lost. But she held on to the gift that God gave her, and she refused to never give up on your dreams. Sometimes you have to lose to win again. I want to pause right here and tell some young person or even some older person under the sound of my voice that to let that be a lesson to you that no matter what obstacle comes before you, hold on to your dreams. Yeah, that your mistakes does not determine who you are because as the story to, continues to unfold, God can take you from the very bottom to the top. And Fantasia Barino's life is a classic example of how God can take you from losing to being very veered by the, to, to from losing to being veered by the world as the American Idol winner. And how many of you know that when you do what Psalms 37 and 4 suggest, that when you delight yourself in the Lord, that he will give you the desires of your heart. And I want to free someone who's listening to me and tell you that no mistake, no inadequacy, no insufficiencies, no weapon that is formed against you by the devil will stop you from accomplishing the dreams that God has prepared for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so as we look into the text today, the life of the character Job, who we are studying today, depicts a man who lost everything so that he could win again. Yeah, there's a person who could speak to loss in pain. Job is that person. Job has lost his family. He has lost his fortune. And he has literally lost everything but his mind, his wife, and a few close friends. And how many of you know in this place under the sound of my voice that some situations will come up on you in life that will make you feel like you have lost everything and the only thing that you have to hold on to is the little peace of mind that you have around And Job has lost everything. But Job has seemed to have lost everything. But one thing Job did not allow or one thing Job did not lose is his relationship with God. And I come to tell somebody that no matter what you are going through in your life, uh, never allow situations and problems uh, to fear you and deter you from your relationship with God. With God. And so my brothers and sisters right here, I just want to pause parenthetically and lift up three ways Job went from losing to winning. Can I do that? Can I do that? All right, the first thing that Job did was he repented. Well, he repented. All right. It's found right here in verses, it's found right here in chapter 42, verses 6. It says, I take back everything I said, and I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. Now, to give clarity to you to what's going on here in the text, Job is having a conversation with God on behalf of his friends who are accompanying him as he goes through his bad situation. 
And how many of you are thankful for real friends who will stick with you through the thick and the thin when you are going through debilitating times and trials and tribulations in your life and sometimes you feel like you don't have anyone to talk to you? How many of you are thankful that God will give you just that one friend that you can share with? And so Job, he's there with his friends and he's talking to them and they are in conversation. They're conversing amongst one another. And so, of course, when you have real friends who care about you and who care about what you are going through, they tend to give their opinion on your situation. Don't they? Won't they give an opinion to your situation? Well, Job's friends were recorded in chapters 4 through 25 of Job giving many inaccuracies, primarily involving why God allowed his people to suffer. Yeah, this overarching inaccuracy of their belief was that Job was suffering because he had done something wrong. And as a result, they repeatedly encouraged Job to admit his wrong and repent so that God would bless him again, which, come, which spoke in complete direction or contradiction to what God had spoke to Job. See, Job didn't do anything wrong. In fact, God said that Job was blameless and walked upright before the Lord. Uh, but Job's friends decided to form their own opinion and narrative of what God was doing for Job's life. And the text says that this made God angry. Said that this made God angry. It made God angry. And God says, I am angry with you and your two friends because you have not spoken the truth about me. Footnote, be careful who you allow to speak into your spirit while you're going through. Yeah, when you are going through, that's when the devil will try to catch you off guard at your most vulnerable state. When you are at your most vulnerable state, that's when the devil will try to come and impose his point of view on you. Uh, but you are going through this because God allowed you to go through it. Yeah, you need to do this or you need to do that or you are going through this because um, of whatever they come up with. Friends will give opinions on your life when they have no inclination of what's really going on. Or just as his own wife said, Job, I don't know why you are holding on to this little thing. God, why don't you just curse God and die? Right. Yeah, his own wife told him to curse God and die. How debilitating is that when you are going through, when you are at your lowest state in your life, the support that you're supposed to have in your spouse, the only one that's with you, she look at you and say, why are you holding on to this faith? Why don't you just curse that God that you are serving and die? Just negative because they don't understand the purpose that God has placed in your life. See, I want to tell somebody under the sound of my voice, they don't understand it because it's your purpose. They can't speak to it because it's your purpose. They can't speak to your situation because it's what God called you to go through. And so you got to be careful who's in your ear trying to tell you how to get out of a situation that they can bring you through. You got to be careful not to rely on man because man didn't bring you to this situation and man can't bring you through it. Do I have any witnesses under the sound of my voice to know that God will carry you out of every situation that you in? He will carry you out of it into a new season. I don't want to get ahead of myself so you have to be careful who's in your ear. Because it's your dream. Yeah, it's your destiny. It's your pain. It's your story. It's your story to tell. And so Job understood that he had done nothing to deserve the sufferings that he was going through. That the trials that he was going through was not because of his behavior. 
Instead, God used the sufferings as a test and as a part of God's sovereign plan in Job's life. And so Job repented to God for even entertaining the conversations that went against God that he had already told Job. He already told Job, he said, I'm testing you because I know what I have put on the inside of you. I'm testing you because I'm about to get ready to bless you with something else. I'm testing you because I want to give you strength so that you can endure this new season that I'm about to push you into. Don't get it twisted just because you are around your friends and they are soaking and y'all are soaking together and you are at a depressive state and so you are forgetting about who I am. Joe, don't forget that I'm the same one who blessed you before. Joe, don't forget that I'm the same one who gave it all to you. And if the Lord give it, he'll take it away, but he'll give it to you again. Yeah. And so the first thing Joe did was he repented. But the second thing that Job did in order to go from losing to winning is he responded. Well, yeah, he responded. Okay. It's right here in verse 8. It says, my servant Job will pray for you. This is God talking to the friends. And I will accept his prayer on your behalf. I will not treat you as you deserve, for you have not spoken accurately about me as my servant Job did. And so what Job did in this situation is Job responded to God through prayer. Yeah, the Bible says my servant Job will pray for you. Job is responding. Job is responding to so God is responding to someone's prayer. That's what I'm going to tell somebody under the sound of my voice. That God is responding to your prayer. Yeah, I know it feels like God may not be moving at the pace that you would like for him to move at, but God told me to tell you that he is responding to your prayer. Somebody should get excited about that because God just answered a prayer for someone under the sound of my voice. I'm going to say it one more time, that God is responding to someone's prayer. Help is on the way. Hallelujah. Help is on the way. And so Job did what a good friend does in this moment. He prayed for his friends. But I want you to pay attention because on the, on the flip side of this, God is talking to those same friends that Job is praying for after he repented. And God is telling them, yeah, Job is praying for you. And I will accept the prayer on your behalf. But I will not treat you as you deserve for speaking inaccurately, inaccurately about me because Job is praying on your behalf. But don't get it twisted. I didn't forget what you said about me. I didn't forget what your response was in Job's time of trouble. And so Job is praying for his friends on their behalf and that's his response. And I want to tell somebody under the sound of my voice that when you are in a place to which you don't understand, let your response be prayer. Yeah. So you can't misinterpret anything in prayer because when you step into that communication with God, God will never lead you astray. Yeah. But once again, you have to get into prayer with God because many people, we try to find our answers outside of God in different places, in different things in different people, but these people have their own experiences that they are gleaning from and they can only get you oh but so far, but you want to trust in the word of the Lord because you know that that word will never lead you astray. Do I have anybody in this place who is leaning and trusting on the word of God in spite of what you can't see, in spite of what you are going through, you are leaning and trusting on the word of God. And aren't we thankful for God who provides grace to us in our lack of understanding? Job never lost hope as he was going through. Job never lost his faith. And because of this, God gave Job, my final point, 
for today, and that is restoration. Somebody shout restoration. 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 Verse 10 says, when Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortune. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much. Somebody shout twice as much. Twice, twice as much than what Job had before. And I want to tell somebody under the sound of my voice, that's just like God. See, all of that time you was in pain, all of that time you was in suffering, and all of those nights that you cried and that you were going through and that you didn't understand why such debilitating things kept happening to you. The entire time God was trying to strengthen you because he was getting ready to restore not only everything that you lost, but he was getting you ready to receive it. Is anybody in this place under the sound of my voice can thank God for me today that he has been getting you ready this entire time to receive something new. So don't cry over what it is that you lost. But God is getting ready to restore everything that the, that the worm has eaten in your life. God is getting ready to restore everything that you lost. For I know it hurt you when you lost it. For I know it hurt you when you went through it. For I know it hurt you, the pain that you went through. For I know it was debilitating. But God told me to tell somebody that you went through it so that he can bless you with the Lord. Can anybody receive that word today? That you went through it so that he could bless you with double. Double for your trouble. Double for your pain. Double for your situation. Double for what you went through. Double for the pain you experienced. Double for the embarrassment that you experienced. Double for everything that you lost. God told me to tell you that you only lost so that you could gain. God had you to go through that situation so that you could be strengthened for your new season. Is anybody excited about what God is getting ready to take you? That's a word for click the day you're not in that church. church.
oh, you know, I was created as a winner. Not because I am who I am, but because I belong to God. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. We all are. So we were not created as losers. We were created to win. And I hope you're ready to go from this place today and start winning. When somebody else told you, uh-uh, it's not going to happen, you were born on the wrong side of the track. You were born and not able to get the right education. You don't have the right bloodline. But the only blood that matters is the blood that comes from God through Jesus Christ the Son. And we know that it will never lose its power. How many of you know it's got power? It has power. Or 2,000 years ago, it's got power right now. So there's one who's not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want you to do that today. You just come forth and we will, we will pray with you. Because that's where it starts. That's how you begin to win. You receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And it's very simple. You just say, I yield. I yield. You ever had to just look in the mirror and say, okay, I give up. God, take it, handle it, because I can't do it. That's all you have to do when you give your life to Christ because he does the hard work. If you don't have a church home, because you need a covering. We would love for you to join us here at Clintondale Church. For this is a place where God dwells. Where you can go from losing to winning. The song simply says, we offer Christ to you. Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is the blood of my new covenant, poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it. Do it in remembrance of me. At this time, let us now take the bread. Eat the bread, which is broken for you and for many. Now take the cup and drink of his precious blood that was poured out for all of us. And now as the confident children God, let us recite the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God, the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and by strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love and set forth the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. We bless God for each of you that you thought it not robbery to stop into Cliftondale today. Well, you had many options, but you chose the best option today. Yes. Amen. So we are blessed to have you both in-house and online with us today. I want to thank all of our worship participants. You are phenomenal. Thank you for the teamwork that goes on here at Cliftondale. For we are a body of Christ, and in a body there are many parts that we work for the glory of God. I'm going to ask our minister for today to come and uh, send you forth. Amen. So as you go forth, just remember those things that you experience here today and you will get through this week. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the word that went forth today. God, we thank you that we have just went from losing to winning. God, that when we walk outside of these doors, God, God, that we will win. God, not only will we win and we won't be selfish, but God will tell someone else how they can win. God, we thank you so much for all that you're going to do. God, we thank you for the prosperous week that we're going to have. Now, God, keep us in your presence as we leave this place, but never your presence. We thank you, we praise you, man, and we love you. It's in the precious name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.